husband, number one is a nurturer, someone that nurtures. Number two, every human being is a what? Potential offender. Many wives don't do that. You meant to insult your husband, they be too. A good spouse is not good enough. Many good people don't make good marriages. Get a copy of Knowing the Right Person by Pastor Ezekiel Tang and be inspired with insightful topics like being the right person, possible character problems, how to work on your character, warning signs, and lots more. You can get this book and other materials by Pastor Ezekiel Tang at Refuge Bookshop, 8 Ikarabido Street, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Or call plus two three four eight one zero six eight three 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 two nine or plus two three four seven zero three one two seven nine eight two six. Acts chapter twenty seven, verse nine to twenty six. How to save your marriage ship? And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest arose, no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was then lost or taken away but after long abstinence paul stood in the midst of them and said sirs you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from crate and to have gained this harm and loss and now i exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep go on for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Well, very quickly, so that we can go to the points for this service, we said marriage ship because... Uh, 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 there are so many ships. There is friendship. There is relationship. There is what? Courtship. What other ship? Entrepreneurship. Business. Business ship. What other ship? Partnership. Internship. And all the ships. There is also marriage ship. Praise God. But more so because. Uh, the story that we read is showing us a ship that was in danger. And you know how the Holy Spirit can take uh, a text and turn it around to tell you things about things. So this one he was telling me about marriage. And uh, this message is for people whose marriages are at the brink of collapse or people who don't seem to know what to do anymore to come out of a bad marriage situation. It's for people uh, to prepare you against any kind of attack that the enemy will throw against you in the future, now in the future, against your marriage especially. So that you can know what to do. Because in every situation, in every whatever you find yourself, there is what to do. Tell somebody there is what to do. It's very important. You see, when you have some standard belief system, it delivers you from confusion and wondering. Eh, what do I do now? Oh, 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 there's what to do. Wisdom is profitable to direct. You can know what to do very easily. And once you establish that in your mind, God will go ahead and begin to minister things to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Why do people go into problems in the first place? Why, how, how come people get into marriage or marital situations in the first place? I'd like you to get the first and second uh, service messages is to help you because we won't be able to go in detail to discuss those things. We said basically because people don't know how to perceive God. People don't have sharp perceptive abilities. Their ability to perceive is poor. They can't know. Everybody just does things. The Bible says of all of them in that ship, I don't know how many of them, there were many, only one person perceived that this voyage was going to be of danger. Only one person perceived. And Paul stood and told the centurion who was leading the ship. He said to him, there's going to be danger in this thing. And the man preferred to believe the owner of the ship and the master of the ship. And before you know what's happening, they set sail and a, a Eurocledon, <laughs> a typhoon hit them. 
and they think they nearly lost their lives. Then Paul stood up and said, you shouldn't have. You should have listened to me when I was telling you. May God give you eyes to see the people you have around you. Do you know you can have somebody that can hear God around you and yet you don't know? And so when he speaks, you don't value it. May God give you grace to know those that God has blessed around you and learn how to value them so you can benefit from them. You can have a prophet in your house and never benefit from his prophetic ministry. Sometimes to be too close to a prophet is a disadvantage because he will not be able to flow in your direction very well because a prophet is not without honor except in his house and among his own. I mean, you, you can stay with a relation for one week as a prophet and you're not able to even pray a prayer for them because they don't have that kind of value for you for which they can receive your prayer. I don't know if I'm making sense today. So Paul was just there. They never valued his presence. They didn't realize that this man with us is not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. He's not just a pastor. He is an apostle. He has all fivefold ministry operating in his life. A high tension wire with the Holy Ghost. And they did not realize who was with them in the ship. And Paul stood up and said, Sars, I perceive that this voyage is going to be tempestuous. Let's not leave this place. <laughs> they looked at him and a number of factors came in. Let me quickly say this. One of the worst things that you can allow to happen in your life is to allow yourself continue life without knowing how to hear from God for yourself. You must know, learn, train yourself on how to hear from God for yourself. By yourself. We live in a generation of spiritually lazy people. Christians are the most lazy set of people when it comes to their relationship with their God than any set of people. So, the more you fellowship with God, the more your ability to perceive is sharpened. The more is, and no, nobody can do that for you. You are the only person that can do that for yourself. When your ability to perceive is on ground, you have you are potentially safe from dangers. Dangers. I mean, you have already delivered yourself from uncountable dangers of life. Before you see a believer caught up in an accident, it's only when we get to heaven they will ask him, Didn't God tell you anything? They are the ones that we tell you, God. One man I heard many years ago, he was praying, praying, praying. He got to his you know, maybe he wanted to pray one hour. And the Holy Ghost prevailed on him to pray a little longer. He said reluctantly, he just stayed a little longer. Just worshipped and prayed and prayed. Maybe the Holy Ghost wanted him to stay two hours. I think he stayed like 30 minutes or something like that. And he stood up to go. Because usually if you are doing such a, having such a time with God, and you have a, an urge to stay longer, you stay there till the urge is lifted. Once the burden leaves, then you know you are released to go. But he left, went, bothered a boss or something. The boss, did, did, before they could reach the journey, became so turbulent. The boss tumbled. He was flung out of the bus. The boss entered a river or something like that. Everybody perished. And he broke his leg or something like that. Just nearly to enter the river himself. God just spared him by a hair's breath. And the Lord said to him right there, it's the reason why I said you should stay longer. Maybe if he stayed longer, he would have missed that bus. Is somebody getting me? Or if he stayed longer, he would have known not to take that bus. So he, I think as at the time he was talking, he was on wheelchair. God just spared his life. There are some tragedies you will escape. Let me bring it down to family situations. Some stupidity that many husbands and wives have, have done that could have been averted if you had connected properly to the almighty God. And sharpen your discernment. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, I think verse 19, the Bible talks about the Shunammite woman believing God for the fruit of the womb and a prophet had been passing by her every day, continually. And one day she perceived, hallelujah, she perceived that this was a holy man of God. And when she perceived, she began to react to that perception. Cook food for him, make him eat. She kept doing it until the man himself said, ah, ah, what must be done for you? Not knowing that this was the man carrying a miracle. 
My question is, she could have perceived it earlier. How many of you know that? Could have been perceived earlier. But that was how long it took her. Then the woman of Samaria in John chapter 4, 19. It must be 4, 19. Okay? And after interacting with Jesus for a while, the Bible says she said to him, I perceive that you are a prophet. In the course of fellowship with Jesus, your ability to perceive will get stronger. Will get stronger. Will get stronger. Hallelujah. So Paul perceived and they all did not perceive. But what happened? I'm just going to go straight to the point now. When you perceive things from God, there will be what I call opposing voices. What do I call it? Opposing voices. Other voices that will try to drown the voice of God in your life. Voice number one that will try to drown the voice of God is the voice of professionalism. The voice of professionals. Whenever the voice of God is standing and a professional voice come up, please respect the voice of God. That inner witness in your spirit. Respect it above any professional input. Don't let any professional input derail you from what God is saying to your inside. Number two is the voice of experience. The voice of profession or professionalism is the owner of the ship. The voice of experience is the master of the ship. A master is an experienced person. Okay, don't let it in the face of the voice of God discard experience. Experience might be a good teacher, but it's not the best teacher. Because some people have experience and not live to even tell the experience. Number three is the voice of, sec the, sorry, the voice of the majority. The voice of the majority. Verse 12. The Bible says majority of them because of the winter, because of the heat or the cold, majority of them said, we won't be able to sleep here. Let's move the other way so we can sleep there. Majority in God doesn't carry the vote. Am I talking to somebody here? Number four is the voice of circumstances. The Bible said in verse 12, the first part of verse 12, when they saw that the place was dangerous to winter in, that is, the winter was too bloodily cold, they felt it was a good way to know that God wanted them to move. And they moved and trouble broke out. Don't let circumstance dictate to you. Be connected enough to God. The fifth one is the voice of seeming confirmations. Seeming, you know what they call seeming confirmations. You see that in verse 13. Let's see verse 13. It looks as if uh, God is supporting. And when the south wind blew softly. <laughs> it blew softly. So it looked as if they had obtained their purpose. You know, it looked as if it was favorable to move. Because the south wind seemed to be blowing softly. Please, when God has spoken to you, don't let anything that look like a favorable condition make you go against the voice of God. Seeming confirmations. Let me give you a little example. Balaam. Shall I go and curse Israel? God said, don't go. They are blessed. They are a blessed people. That word is pregnant. If you go, the curse will return on your head. Don't go. Say, okay. Then the king said to him, I would have given you promotion. I would have given you silver and gold. You, you see how you miss now. He said, wait first, before you change your mind, let me ask God again. Uh, Lord, how many of you know the second going is greed that sent him back to God? It's foolishness. He seemed to be doing the right thing, but it's wrong. It's with the wrong motive. Why are you going back to God when he has already told you, don't go? Now you heard that the man will give you money. You went back to God and said, hey, God, is there no way I can just... Even if I don't curse them, let me call them. Call. I won't put the S-E. And God got angry. He thought God approved. God said, go. The plan was God was going to kill him on the road. Because he said, I will curse them that curse you. And I will bless them that bless you. So God wanted to kill him on the road. What saved Balaam was a very faithful donkey. Who, since Balaam could not see again, God transferred the prophetic eye. To the donkey. Donkey saw angel. He said, my master don't die. <laughs> he saw the angel and... Balaam moved by greed of how much they have promised him from Asorok. He want to spoil my blessing. The donkey moved, saw the angel and changed direction. That angel was to decapitate Balaam. Because he suffered no man to do them wrong. Israel was coming out of Egypt. They were like 
foreigners. He said he suffered no man. <laughs> so Balaam now wanted to be the one. So the angel was to remove his head. The, the donkey crushed Balaam's foot to the wall. Balaam said, you don't die today. Hi, my leg. He beat the donkey till the donkey talk. <laughs> donkey said, ah, ah, master. How many years now? You don't see me do like this before. That should have made Balaam say, ah, yeah, you talk. Balaam didn't do it. Balaam replied. You two times now, you, you want to wound me. That's you are so angry, you don't know a donkey is talking. <laughs> and you are replying the donkey. <laughs> May God deliver you from greed. May God deliver you from foolishness. He hit the donkey. Then the angel showed up out of pity for the donkey. Kobala would have killed that donkey that day. The angel showed up and said, No, for this donkey, you don't die. See the sword, it was for your head. I tell you first time, don't go. You still want to go. What's that? That's how Balaam retreated from that journey. Whenever I look as if you put pressure, some people, God will tell them clearly, this is not your husband. Father, I thank you. I know that even though it's not your time now, I know it can be your time later on. I thank you because the Bible said about They chance God. They, they practice witchcraft against God. Till he now look as if God is no longer pressuring them. I don't know if you've ever come to that point. May you not come there. Where God said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. He removes his hand. He looks as if he has allowed you to go. <laughs> that may be a journey of no return. Am I making sense now? That he has removed his hand and you appear to be going. Ah. Praise God. Everybody lift your hand and pray this prayer. Say, Father. Give me sensitivity of spirit to know what you are saying every time and in every situation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I think it was you. How many years have, have I been pastoring you now? 12 years. 12 years. Okay. Because we're, we're together from, from Eket. Got to work with Moby. Came to Eket. I mean, every young man's dream you want to be the hottest person in the market. Nobody so. If you enter this company, another company calls you say, hey, oh boy, don't call me. Oh. So he was to move to uh, Chevron? Shell? Shell. Mobile had, had taken Shell, was paying much better that time. And Shell called him. By this time, he had just come to church like maybe a few months. <laughs> you know, I learned, he said, he didn't know that I had, I had it from somebody else. That he said, ah, I just find church where I go take correct my life. Now they give me another job with better pay. And now go. Hmm. What if I go there? I don't see pastor. I don't see church. He turned down the offer. That's you turn down a higher offer based on spiritual considerations. When I heard the story, somebody said it and I heard it. He didn't know. We're not even close then. He was just in church. The Holy Ghost said to me, there are many people that are led by money. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. This one is as many people that are led by money. They are the... <laughs> For them, whatever Holy Ghost has to say doesn't matter. As far as money is there, how much money? How much better? 300,000 better. Uh, expect me. I'm resigning tomorrow. They have moved. No spiritual consideration. I, I, I call it spiritual sentiments. So many have moved, approaching, pursuing so-called greener pastures to the detriment of their destinies. He said the south wind blew softly. So it looked as if they had achieved their purpose. Some of them may have started telling Paul, <laughs> Paul, I'm telling you, I, I say, I'm a professional of all these things. You know, a professional, you know, this things with something, I've been this thing for 35 years now. That's why I'm called the master of this ship. God is not a professional. He is God. <laughs> he doesn't look at wind. He sees the end. There is nothing in this world God has not already seen. Can I tell you? 
The person who knows more address in this woman than anybody else, his name is Holy Spirit. He was here when there was no street. He was here when there was no road. He was just earth without form and void. The Holy Ghost was already here. From chapter 1 verse 3, the Spirit of God brewed upon the face of the water. Before God said anything, he had been here. So if he tell you go like this, he doesn't just know the road. He knows the former, former name of the road. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me now? He knows the original name of the road. Go like this, I'm telling you. There are some treasures that development has covered in the earth. He tells you, buy this land. He says, oh, can I buy this land? I'm not this kind of voice. Is that. He said, buy this land. Now, I, was, I, I was here. Kenneth Copeland. Some of you know him. Was moving around one day and God said, buy this land. He said, look at the land. For what? what kind of land is this? What would they be here? He so despised the land. God said, I say, buy this land. So out of uh, obedience, okay, give me a break. I bought it all. <laughs> I just, I bought it all. Let me rest. He bought it. And one day he just said, let him go and look at um, this thing he bought. To look around. And before he knew what was happening, pss, oil was coming out of the ground. Pss, he had just bought oil. No, oil block. Is it oil block? Oil where? He had just bought. He said, ah! So, you were asking me to buy oil. The Baba that had been here before you came. Before your f -f 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 father came, Holy Ghost has been moving around. He knows the place. If you buy land, nothing will move. <coughs> he, he knows what he for that place. He has been here. He knows the one government will soon demolish. Because he saw it before. He sees the end from the beginning. Whatever development we are seeing now and are yet to see, Holy Ghost has seen it. So if your wife says something to you and you get very angry and you want to reply, I mean some choice words have brewed up in your mind. He said, let her come back. When I, only when I will talk, she will just cry and die. <laughs> oh, let her come back. <laughs> Holy Ghost tells you, my son, my son, don't talk. <laughs> no, <laughs> when she talk, nobody tell her. <laughs> it's my turn, no. <laughs> it's my turn, no. When the Holy Ghost is warning you, keep aside your pride. Obey him. Because he is saving you a thousand times, thousand, thousand times of trouble that you don't need for your life. There are times my wife will offend me. She doesn't even know she has offended me. And the Holy Ghost will tell me, forget it, it's distraction. Okay, what do you want to do now? I want to tell her, this thing you just do is paining me. Don't do that kind of thing. Holy Ghost said, leave it, forget it, forgive and move on. In my mind, I said, eh, it's paining me. <laughs> Can she do like that? <laughs> By the time you forget it, till today, many of them she doesn't know and will never know. It's not nursery. <laughs> As for that one, I'm proud of our language. Not nursery. <laughs> it's, it's an English you never hear anywhere in the world. It's what became, some, man, some men have behaved like children. When you come here, sit down. I came in, you didn't even greet me. Next thing you are asking me a question. You see, when, when did I do that? Three days ago. <laughs> and I've been waiting for you to apologize. You can't even apologize. You can't apologize. I know you always... Pride, pride is what you. And the thing about anger, when you start talking, Satan starts to supply you words like firewood. You know? Say, so yes, tell her, tell her, tell her. Put this one. <laughs> tell her, yes. Uh -huh. If you say this one, it will pain her more. Uh -huh. Fire. Uh -huh. Then the woman you wanted to tell to apologize starts to cry. You are now need, need, you now need to now apologize to her. I, I, I don't know if I'm making sense here. He goes, let it go. So I will just walk away and go and sit down somewhere and the thing passes. 
Life is sweet. Life continues. I don't have to. Hmm. Three weeks ago, you ignored me. Why you ignore me? Only God knows. <laughs> but it's so painful me, I have sworn. Ma basiem. I could. You will not do that. Tell your neighbor, say you will not do that. It is foolishness. Did you hear what I said? said tell your neighbor, be mature. Hallelujah. The voice of seeming, seeming what? Confirmation. Here, you see? It's confirmation. How the voice of the Lord is saying. Don't do that. Listen to your spirit. How do you save your marriage ship? Verse 17 of Acts chapter 27. He said, and they undergirded the ship with helps. They say, one picture will speak louder than a thousand words. Husband, wife. And this marriage is their ship. And now, storm, 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 storm. This ship will soon scatter. All oh, this why they've been like this. So. They've been like this. So. Things are threatening. Things are threatening. Distance is getting worse. Somebody should be wise here. And say the way this thing is going, let's get some help. It was called cables or ropes. They use it. It's called under getting of the ship. So that they don't enter into sinking sand. Because where they were going. That is by yourself. You don't want to be together again. But you employ some helps. He said, we got us some helps. In the, what they did was that they passed it under like this, under like this, the ship, and to keep the ship together. The only way this ship can arrive its destination is as one piece, not in two pieces. Am I talking to somebody? So they tied it together. My question was, in a marriage situation, what is the help? We know that the help is the Holy Ghost. And I will send you the comforter. And it will help you. But in this marriage situation, what is the help? I identified three. Listen to the voice of counsel. The voice of what? Counsel. That's your counselors. Who, has, who is that? Your pastor. And I will give them pastors after my heart. That will feed them with knowledge and understanding. The presence of a pastor is the, is the elimination of scattering and wandering. You will see it in Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Matthew 9 36. And he had compassion on the multitude. Because they were scattered. And they were what? They were fainted. And because they fainted. And were scattered abroad. As sheep having no shepherd. This is the shepherd. Is somebody hearing me? I mean, you know, there are some marriages in tough times that could not have survived without this input. There is a time the marriage is not even existing. What is holding it together is pastor. What pastor said. Respect for pastor. Uh, it's pastor I'm respecting. You know. One wife, before she came to church, whenever her husband offends her, she would just carry a knife. We know some husband, when they finish doing bad things, they want to go out. Just enter the car. Scallywad. Bon come get out of here. So the man kept doing it one day. She now learned sense. When the man wanted to go enter the car, she carried a kitchen knife. Went to the car and punctured two tires. Go out, let me see. He said, You don't die here today. Me, you die or me die. The man said, You punctured my tire. You punctured my tire. You punctured my tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe at the end of the day, two days after the man will have to go and buy a Belgium tire and then replace the thing. Twelve of them will start drinking coffee together again. A good spouse is not good enough. Many good people don't make good marriages. Get a copy of Knowing the Right Person by Pastor Ezekiel Tang and be inspired with insightful topics like being the right person, possible character problems, how to work on your character, warning signs, 
and lots more. You can get this book and other materials by Pastor Ezekiel Tang at Refuge Bookshop, 8 Ikalabido Street, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Or call plus 234-810-683-3329 or plus 234-703-127-9826. is a nurturer someone that nurtures number two every human being is a what potential offense 